Welcome back to Developers Home. Today we'll gonna setting up our system for data engineering learning. So as we discussed earlier that we are planning to learn new technologies which is part of data engineering. So in going forward what we are gonna do is we are learning Spark and we are also learning different data engineering tools like we are gonna learn about Apache Spark, Apache Hive and different open source project and for that as we discussed earlier that we need to set up our system right so if you go through this blog so what we are doing is we have design our plan that in going forward we are gonna learn about this all are the emerging data engineering technologies and for that as we discussed earlier that you need to download few of the tools and we are doing set up our system using docker so if you want to understand what is docker or what is docker compose and how to use docker please go through earlier videos you can find videos here and you can also have blogs here on this page if you go to data engineering and go to docker you will have all the understanding on docker and how to set up docker compose and docker so now today what we are gonna do is in going forward in a starting we're gonna learn about apache spark and we'll be solving data engineering problems using apache spark and also sql and we might be using postgres sql or mysql we'll be also learning non-sql database which is mongodb or cassandra so for now we are setting up our system for apache spark postgres sql mysql and mongodb so what i have done is i have created one github repo you can clone this repo and we are installing this all the tools mongodb mysql postgres sql and spark in our system i am using docker compose and if you want to learn about docker compose you can explore earlier blogs and earlier videos so now i have set up this uh, repo in my local system so you can see that i am using docker compose and i have different folder so to make things clear i have created different folders and going forward what we are gonna do is we are adding more configurations and that's why i am using docker file otherwise you know that i can directly specify that okay i want to take reference from this image so as of now i am just specifying that image so i can do that but i have designed structure this way so going forward let's say on we want to run startup script or anything on database so we can do that that's why i have created separate folders so just clone this and after cloning as we discussed earlier what we can do is now we'll create image from this so i will use docker compose of and build so this will create image for us a step by step for now it's building spark after that it will build postgres sql after that it will build mysql and then mongodb so meanwhile we'll go to our blog and discuss that what we are doing today so if you see this uh, docker compose file what we are doing is we are exposing few ports so you see in a spark we are exposing port number 8888 and we are also exposing port starting from 4440 to 4049 so 8888 is required to use jupyter lab because you know that we are gonna run our spark from jupyter lab and that's why we have exposed that port and we also want to use spark web ui and for that we have exposed this range of ports so that is for spark so for postgres sql postgres sql running on port number 5432 and that's why we have exposed that port same way mysql which is running on default port 3306 and that's why we have exposed that and for mongodb 27017 which is a default port if you want to change default username and default password you can change it from here on environment variable but as of now i am using default username and password so you see that our docker image is ready and our docker container are also running we have used command which is docker compose up and build so it's a building container plus it's starting all the containers so now if i go to docker desktop we can see that these are the all four images are created and once image created it's also started all the docker containers so we can see that okay we have spark mysql postgres and mongodb so this all are started so let's check is it all properly installed or not so you know that in going forward when we gonna start learning spark so we don't have any problem so what i am doing is i'm just going inside this one 
and I'm just trying PySpark and we'll see that is it working or not so PySpark is there and if you follow my earlier blog where I discuss separately store installing spark so you see that when we install spark I am also installing this all the libraries and I am also installing Jupyter lab so that it's a use it's very easy to access it from web browser I am also installing these are the packages and connector because we are gonna use this Delta Lake for creating lake house and storing data in Delta format I am also installing packages for AWS GCP blob storage data lake data lake services and snowflake because we are gonna use this in our future so now going so here we can see that okay our spark session is started and we can see that okay it also provided a UI for us which is started on port number 4040 so we'll just go and check is it working fine or not so if I go localhost on port 4040 I might be getting that uh, spark web UI and we can see that okay we have started this spark from pi spark shell which is correct so we can explore it from here also so that is also good next step is we also install Jupyter lab so we want to see that okay that is working on port number 88 or not and for that we require that token so there are two ways of getting token for now if you go to logs you will also get that okay we have this uh, token with URL so I am just going here and trying and it should work so we also have Jupyter lab successfully install and configure second option of uh, you know that if, if in case you wanna you don't wanna go to logs and check what is a token for Jupyter lab, lab so you can go to that spark container and from here also we can use a uh, Jupyter server list and it should be a showing token to us so you know that we are getting same token because as of now only one Jupyter lab server is running on this server so we see that okay spark is working fine so now going to next part uh, which is uh, in our case uh, mongodb let's go to mongodb so now i am going to mongodb and just i want to make sure that we have correctly installed mongodb or not so if i go here i will use authentication because we are using basic authentication here i will go to visual studio code and check what is the default username and password so this is root and mongodb so root and mongodb which will be our username and password and i'm connecting this one and we see that okay it's connected and we also see by default mongodb databases are there so we are also successfully install and configure mongodb next is uh, postgres sql and for that i am using pg admin and let's add server here we have local server let's say this is a local server and now we'll pass 127.0.0.1 we are running this on port number 5432 and yes we have our maintenance database which is postgres username which is postgres and password is also postgres so this should be connecting okay so i think i need to install a latest version of uh, postgres sql and that's why it's not connecting here so what I can do, I can also connect it from here. So I will just try from connecting here, which is Postgres SQL. And if I go and check edit connection, so I can see that, okay, this is also connecting to 127.0.0.1 and same username and password. And we can see that this is successfully connecting. So we do not have any issue with installing Postgres SQL. Only thing is I just need to update my PG admin because this latest version of Postgres SQL which is not working with this older version of PG admin so I need to go and update that second thing is I now I will try with uh, MySQL so if I go here it's also working so I already had that uh, added and now if I go and check because earlier I connected and I am always using same username and password and that's why it's able to connect root and password which is also same so I am also able to connect MySQL so we are uh, good on all the data engineering tools 
So here you see that we have Apache Spark, Postgres SQL, MySQL and MongoDB which are successfully installed in our system. So from next block and next, next video, we are gonna learn on Apache Spark and we are also gonna solve data engineering problems. So we have system is ready. So we'll see you in the next blog and we'll be solving and learning new things. Thanks for watching video and see you.